happened in the past, you have to say. But uh, there we go. Some more sprays there just to be clear. The players can't see that. It's just a nice, fancy addition for you guys at home. Lovely artwork being implemented across the map as we get into it. Here we go then. It will be north to start on the CT side with Avangar with an array of utility, actually. You can see they've got two smokes, Molotovs, a pair of those as well as they head towards Viva Kiabi. He is known for his aggression and his shaky aim. You'll see that come into effect right now. Does the damage, but can't find the frag. The Gade will convert it. If he checks logs here, he's got another guaranteed kill, but not aware of the pros. What's happened there? Buster! His mouse, like, like, skipped or something. He absolutely flicked off to the sky. I don't know yeah, why he didn't bizarre. get that kill. That was guaranteed frag. We'll have to see that in slow motion if I you blame, can, please. I blame that on the dog hairs when I'm at home. Yeah, that was exactly what it looked like. The mouse sensor just jittered somehow, and he didn't get the kill. That was a lock-in. He ran past with a knife, and you don't kill him. That's really quite bizarre. If they can still win the round, he'll breathe a sigh of relief, and we'll see what happens here. Easy from the pit. Does realize they have gotten onto the bomb site. Low HP for Fitch. He's on 22. Susceptible to the pistol behind him, trying to play an angle so as not to be spotted and worry about rotations from Volda, but he's not overcommitting because AZ's calling exactly where they are and that there's no need or cause to be alarmed. There's no bomb going down. Volda does eventually find the head of Fitch either way. And just two remain on the T side. Bomb still down toward alt middle as well. They'll slowly accumulate themselves and work toward a 40 seconds to work with, so they can slow this down. It's certainly a winnable cause. Gate as well only on 26. The Glocks don't quite have the range or accuracy at range of the USP. But they certainly have the bullet capacity and the potential to do damage to anyone who's already lowered and quickly, if needed, up close, which now might be the case with Bomb going down for Jamie. Trains out on one, but he finds himself in a one-on-two. -on Unaware of is that close. Great reactions. You talked about his AWP. He's got three on the pistol this time to start it off, and that's going to build up his bank to get towards the uh, much sooner. Now, if he's got it on the T side of Inferno, I'll be even more impressed. Gade with low HP. This could be his unraveling and his Jame delivering once again. What a day he's having. Four kills in the pistol. He won a handful of clutches in cash as well. And it looks like his form continues to look so promising for Avangar. Big pistol picked up there and it looks like a CT4 spy from what I can see so far. A scout at least has been purchased. I assume some CZs will come out as well. And some Desert Eagles, no doubt, as a UMP on the chest plate there of Gade, along with Avada as well, CZs for Kiabi and AZ. So a very viable round to invest in his second one uh, at Inferno, but um, the fact is you need those smoked, I would say. I'd prefer to have a smoke and a couple of flashbangs with a CZ instead of the UMP, but uh, we'll see what can be done here as KD and hunts for information towards the bottom of the middle. Back toward Banana for the T side. AK's in hand. The stack is pretty common in toward B. It's not a full stack, only one extra player on that side of the map. A looking to support Kirby. Single smoke will push them both back. Leave AZ on his own. He finds one, though, without taking any damage, but unable to be aware of the fact that Buster was over top. The boost. It's late, but it finds one. Gade managing to get the kill down to a three on three as a result of that first kill from AZ. And then Kirby. Additional smoke. He actually puts that slightly deeper than you'd expect for the CT side. I thought maybe he'd wrap into the right afterward, but the incendiary is going to keep him at bay. And Volda tries to go back up. Does find Fitch. A chance here now. Remember, they've got no kits. Need to operate very quickly and efficiently at this point. They know Buster's there towards the new box. They need to trade out this kill, which they will do. Buster goes down, and it will be a tight defuse, but I think they've got that one no problem whatsoever. It's Valda with three kills. The absolute shining star of North as he survives on two HP. Kiabi with the defuse there, and North answer right back. It was easy to kick things off with a nice shot with the CZ. He was taken down straight after that, but it bought enough time just to delay that plant, allow his teammates to rotate in, and Valda have to go with that impressive three-piece there, and we'll head into what presumably is going to be a four-spy four? Four for Avangar here. We'll see if that rings true as we get into the next round. Let's have a look at it. Should be a mixture of a couple of rifles and pistols if they did force. Just the one AK, so not going all in on this one. Fitch has got armor and a Glock. Bit of a strange set of affairs there. But uh, he gets given the P250 now. That makes more sense. They swap it around. There we go. Yeah, if you're going to have one player that's fully suited, you might as well give him the weapon to go along with it. You'd expect that to be a natural course of action. Inferno is typically, we say, the best map to decide a series on because everyone's pretty up to task on it. And it just plays like a classic Counter-Strike map. You have 
uh, map space available to you. You can have a tug of war with the areas like Banana and Middle, and you can have positions and aggression. It's just, it plays very, very well in CSGO. So uh, a lot of teams comfortable and uh, can play their style on it. It doesn't need to be played in one particular way. As we'll see them going for that banana control here. Remember, it's just the one AK. It is not a force buy. A couple of smokes available to them, but where are they going to use them? They show presence towards that banana area. This grenade is going to do so much damage. Not as much as I thought it would be. Very quick and we'll take the lion's share of it. KD looking for a second frag. Might not have to fully commit. Drops the incendiary. Nice idea. But ultimately gives his life up. Fitch anticipating someone to peek on the back of that flash, just pre-fired in the position that he was. Thankfully for his sake, no one was peeking. That allows him to continue to rotate back around and support the site. Support Valda, he's done a tremendous job of doing so. He finds Fitch. Well, they're able to kill us out on Jame. It's 2-1 for North. Pretty straightforward affair. They'll keep an AK carrying over and they'll take advantage yet again of the economic situation CT side. Exactly what you would want to do. Again, it's not quite a one-sided map per se like Nuke. Like some of the others in the pool, it's pretty back and forth, but it is still slightly CT-sided. Certainly was very CT-sided in our last series, but that was for other reasons. Absolutely. Well, this round should be no different, to be fair, considering North have the AKs, the Orgs, and we've got a Tech-9 in the hands of Jane. The Star Orb uh, will be hamstrung here as he comes in, trying to get towards Banana the Star. They're taking a lot of damage from the grenades at the very start of the round. It's going to be Kiabi. Following it up with the incendiary towards the locks and a nice courtesy grenade as well. It'd be actually perfectly placed towards the bottom there. It's going to land in the face of Jane. Down to 33 he goes. And they have lost the battle of the banana. And unfortunately for Cadian, they've won the battle of the boiler. Valda answering back and Gay doing a great job there. Difficult position to stay alive in as well. Valda with two kills. And Valda can't fall back. But still, he's done his job. It certainly has. Gate still holding off as well toward the pit position. The anchor of the A site, if you will. We talk about that often. If you're going to rotate out but are uncertain of the position of the bomb, you might as well leave a player there. It's hard to distill them. We talked about that earlier this morning as well. You need almost two nades now by default to clear the position behind the wall. James to start it with an AK. Go along with Buster. James on 33 and oh, great timing, but the flash was off. That was actually thrown by AZ's teammate. So he got one, backs were exposed, but then was fully blinded and pulled the actual crosshair placement away from the flash in doing so. Well, still possible here for Buster. Maybe not so much now. Down to just 10 points of health and 25 seconds remain. Gade holding towards quad. Doesn't really have to do much, but listen out for that bomb plan. It's exactly what he's doing here. Doesn't need to commit. He can even allow the bomb to go down. He doesn't want to leave this in a one versus one for his teammate. Bomb will be planted. He can get in an advantageous position here. Read as to where his opposition could be, but this still could get awkward. He doesn't look that in control, but a nice shot to close it out. And it will be bomb planted, like I said. That's, you'd rather the bomb go down and uh, allow your teammate to rotate in and guarantee the victory instead of you trying to deny that plan. It goes wrong, and you leave your teammate in a really compromised position. There's two kills with Gade, picks up an AK as well, 3-1 on the board, and with the bomb plant down, Avangar could buy this, I doubt it. I think it'll be more of a partial buy here, some Deagle armor action, and maybe a bit more. I see two AKs there, so uh, maybe a couple of AKs and some pistols, or they go for the full investment. Time will tell as uh, the final map of the day continues. Continues at a reasonably steady pace. It's been most mid-round exchanges at this point. We haven't seen any drawn-out affairs, but it's certainly not nail-biting or riveting in action yet. This peak could be as they get aggressive finally toward alt-middle. Valda wanting to set the tempo early. They need to make sure they cover off the mid-wall because they can wrap behind him. Thankfully, Cadian's done just that, but they've lost Gade. Valda retreating back, knows the smoke was in position, finds one further, and that baits in Cadian. So each kill working in tandem from the other, the aggression and the attention pulled the parts. Good trades from North, and they find themselves in three-on-one with already just 40 seconds gone in the round. It's Fitch that will at least get a bomb plant from this. Just barely get that down, and then they'll swarm him from all directions. He's got a good angle that'll isolate, but is able to spot him and herd him going into the corner, so they have the information required. 4-1. 
three AKs carried over as well. You talk about that because, again, CTs can't purchase that weapon. It's over the M4, has the one-shot headshot potential. Especially if you want to play an aggressive game as well. If you want to be pushing that banana position, all of a sudden you have the same weapon. You have the one-tap potential. Not only do you have the advantage of all the grenades you can throw down there, but hopefully you can get the one-taps going as well. This team is full of aim stars. It's just the coordination, the synergy that hasn't really been uh, clicking with them overall in the last few months. But uh, a victory here today. I'd say it's required. They, they need to start getting some positive news for this squad. A best of three victory against Avangard wouldn't be anything to write home about, but definitely building blocks, uh, especially for the coaches, his first day on the job. As um, all he can really offer today is kind of notes and anti-strats on Avangard. Can't really bring much more than that to the table. And just try and help them out in an emotional factor as well. Make sure everyone's calm and not bickering. And most importantly, not waiting until the last 10 seconds before they execute. He needs to make sure he stays on top of that. At the minor, that was a massive problem on their T side. Guns available both ways. Finally, we'll get an AWP in the picture for Cadian. Get to see GM go toward that on T side off. It is probably the most difficult role for an AWP player is Inferno T side. The angles favor the CTs. They get position almost by default based on timing. You've got to force them off of it. You've got to be very aggressive and assertive with the AWP. Easy. Little bounce nade into the cubby corner. He'll check tree as well as he gets over top of the logs. Thankful not to be exposed by the smoke that's soon to dissipate. Address that, put a further one down. Some more utility used on the CT side. Two smokes remain. Three incendiaries and a Molotov that was carried over from the last round. So they still have some defensive utility to play with on the north side. Try and buy some time to force Avangar's hand late. Bomb intentionally left down inside of middle as well. Means Avangar just wants to find the equalizer to pull this back to a four on four. They've got mid wall to work with in doing so, but that's still a difficult task. CTs know they've got the advantage. There's no need to overcommit to a peak. And from mid wall, you need utility usually just to make a play. So they're eventually they're going to have to concede and try to make that play happen without evening up the score ahead of time and without much information at this point as well. Time so ticking away. One flashbang remains for Avangar. They have mid control. They have to just go for a contact play here, map, and let's hope for the best. Gade. Nice position to shut this one down. They don't have time to check every single spot, but they do make their way towards the bomb site. Great headshots upon entry, and all of a sudden it changes. It goes to a three versus three. Kiabi's gone down for sure. I'm not sure how Avangar have done this. This is such a basic approach. Walk towards quad. You would assume a player would be in towards that broken wall position, but no. Gate actually holding towards the right hand side. Got nothing from the position at all. And had he been there and got the earlier information, could have been a different story, but Avangar spotted their window and jumped through it, right in towards the A side, found the initial headshot, and even two kills from Cadian wasn't enough. Clean round for Avangar in the end. Very clean. Impressive at that. Pulling it back again, we said they didn't have the information, they couldn't find the pick, they pretty much had to commit to the site without spawning anyone. Didn't stay alive that close to the bomb inside of the pit in the corner. So all the guns carried over, and so too the AWP for Cadian. So a further round that they'll have that. They've got money enough to buy. I think I saw nine grand on one of the North players. So they'll be able to drop weapons out and get a full buy on the board yet again. Indeed. You can see the odds from GG Bet provided there. North still the favorites in our third and final map. We have two more best of threes to bring you tomorrow. Pretty much two every day. It's a three-day tournament. Four teams here in total. We have an upper bracket and a lower bracket culminating in a grand final, of course. We expect to see Na'Vi there, but after their disappointing starts to the tournament today, time will tell as Avangar changed the pace, sending two players towards Banana and Stark. Great grenades as Buster does a lot of damage there, looking to follow it up as well. Takes down AZ, pushes through the flames. Kiabi knows he needs a trade here, fighting in front of CT Spawn, decides to fall back. He's low HP as well, and that was very close, but Kadian was protecting him in Gate. Faces towards second middle, but gets nothing for it. But Vauda certainly does. It's quite fortunate as well, because the Flames, he committed through them to get the kill. Buster, but Valda going back inside of the site, or rather, excuse me, Kirby going back inside of the site with the nades, had already committed to retreating, and that's actually where they caught AZ in transition. Truthfully, if they known that he was going to push them, you'd get an easy trade on that. They know he's isolated. You go one for one. He's forward of the Flames. His teammates can't do anything to help him, but it was just an awkward situation for North. Katie will at least trade on Buster, but Kiarby gone already. He's left alone to cover B. Rotation 
is on the way. He'll find Fitch, though. That changes everything, because now it's the advantage. Jame as well, standing in flames to throw out his own. I think the HP was probably more required than the utility, and a little bit of patience might have prevailed because he puts himself in a very precarious position. As well as easily able to take him down. Kicker with three is... Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I thought was going to be out of the round, but he at least pulls off a spectacular shot. He can get the bomb as well. Oh my goodness. Sure, it's not looking likely he wins this, but the mind games begin now. Does he run back towards A? Does he stay at B? The CTs aren't aware, he's made the right choice. The fact that Cadian has the AWP, he wants to go to the AWPA. As ridiculous as that sounds, HP not a factor against the sniper rifle. And if he can get the bomb planted and find Cadian and isolate him, he might have a real chance here. Molotov gives away his position. Does he just go for the straight up plan here? Cadian would be brave to challenge and he's just gonna save, save. I believe. Okay. I think that was worth going for, but he's just gonna save the AK, at least have that guarantee for the next round. But there we go. Decent attempt there, lovely shot towards B. He keeps the AK, they can buy around that, I suppose, but it is gonna be 5-2 in favor of the north side here at this point. Valder top fragging again. I think every map I've watched the last few months, he seems to be at the very top. Must be frustrating putting in these level of performances time and time again, but still not yielding the success he certainly deserves. So it is a full investment here. Two AK-47s, obviously one brought in from the previous round. It's Jane with the other. Great tournament so far from him. Decent grenade damage. And it's Cadian. It looks like he'll almost certainly be picking up this first kill. Fitch goes down, five versus four, and they've confirmed they're on pistols, etc. They can fall back and assault the crossfires now. Oh, maybe they can't. Wow, not with shots like that. Kicker, he showed one in the last round. He finds this time with HP. Two spectacular entry kills that open up the B site. Bomb will make its approach. The rotations will get there for whatever they're worth. One of them will be the AWP, but ample smokes down to cover off any line of sight he would have hoped to have toward the bomb site directly. Safe plant, everyone over on the right side. No one even looking to cross back as they already have a player at bottom middle to make sure that any rotations are cut off. They'll make their escape eventually from the bomb site, so as not to go down with it. But another round to Avangard. It's going to be five to three. Already, we're seeing how close Inferno can be. And now that the money starts to get whittled down for North, this will be the first time they're really facing a situation without the availability of getting full nades. Now, saving three guns, they can certainly force out. But it gets closer and closer each round of breaking them, and that matters more so for utility on Inferno. Sure, we'll see. Yeah, it's deep smokes, banana. We talk about the Molotovs and the way that Astralis have coined the meta with double nades. They're all pretty essential in holding off defensively on this map. Well, the good news is, is Valda has uh, enough to drop, uh, maybe he go for the UMP instead, just to make sure he has that aforementioned utility, but we'll see, I would say a tactical timeout likely at this point. Um, just really discuss the situation. This is the third and final map of the best of three. Uh, North, I guess, going into this one, I think a lot of people might have even said Avangar are the favorites, considering what they've shown as of late. But for me, it's always North should be winning this game just just from the caliber of talent on the server for them but uh really impressed with the level especially from jame and uh Kiko as well today as well those entry kills towards the b bomb site phenomenal what are you going to do about that you feel like you're under control you've got your crossfire set up he just busts through a smoke and hits two headshots before you can even react pretty incredible stuff there's the octagon for you and we'll see this tactical pause. They take a lot of them, actually, haven't got They've used all of them on every map so far, I believe. So uh, they want to make sure they are thinking correctly and making sure they have everything. And here we go. There's the lovely lady announcing the end of the conference. Yes, don't worry about that. That affects nothing for us other than that she gets to be uh, part of our TriCast. Yeah. It's a feature we brought to the table for this. <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. Jame already working out from the underpass position, just checking toward top middle. 2-2 split with swing on defense, so no one directly toward the arch, but covered off passively. It's Kyarbi in that position. Nice bounce, Molotov. That'll land in the corner. Smoke extinguishes the flames, but it certainly gives away and reveals the fact that he was in that position. They won't throw any further nades down. They could have with that information, but they elect to allow him to retreat. Buster gets away, having only lost 18 HP. Adrian's waiting patiently, has been the whole time. There's a chance that he could jump up here and just have a little spot on the corner. That's why Kadian could be tested with the flick, but he'll be flashed off first before he even gets a chance. Nice work 
So you push him back to more defensive position, gives up the fact the orb is here. Execution doesn't even look likely that it's to be coming in quite dry at this stage. As 35 seconds remain, there's no bailing out now, and Kadian needs to be very careful his position. Can't hit the shop. Does it bait AZ in though? It does, but he can't find the initial frag. There's a second. That's the one that really counts. The bomb now cannot be planted. He's still fighting strong here. Oh my goodness, that's great work. Runs out of bullets as it goes into the three on two. Will this bomb get planted? Will indeed. Not covered off though. They went aggressive towards CT, unaware that they'd already had a player rotate into ruins and all the taking away that aggro, that distraction is easily ample enough to allow Gade back in. They'll just play around with a few shots while they defuse and it'll go another round to north. Six to three, that's their first in a while, mind you. So potential reset on the cards. And fortunately, it's not quite gonna be a full reset in the fact that they had a little bit of residual cash they're able to carry over as a result. This is great play from AZ. You can see they had two players in this position. Technically, Kadian did try and fall back towards second oranges. Taken down, but they did take the aggro away from AZ for a few seconds there to find those three kills. They had no idea there'd be a second player lurking towards those new boxes. So fantastic work by him. Denies a plant. Three North players survived. Really going to set them up financially. But as you can see, James still has the AWP facing towards the top of middle. It's very rare a CT would actually challenge that deep these days, but smoke goes down quickly actually from north. They're not messing around whatsoever. You can see the orbs looking for any potential boost behind it. This is what you'd call a force fire. There's two tech nines and it's all based around James. They know they need to break down the momentum now and hopefully put an end to the streak of rounds north have picked up. It's down to the AWP and fast play here. Game a few in front of them, only good for one though. Alder from inside of the cubby, the bait and switch position. He's been revealed, so he's got to go aggressively, and they've already covered him off with a Molotov. He had no chance of really getting out of there alive. AZ, though, will redress the same angle, same position, offside mid, as he comes Ugh. back down toward the arch, but the AWP, certainly ready, is able to find the kill in response. Still the advantage, though, to North. Trying to hold on to the lead there. All right, Jim. Whittled away. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very bold to push through that smoke with an off. Have to hit a shot like that. Flames behind him. He knows he's covered off from both sides, and the flames will do the damage. I think a bullet just enough to put him within range of the tick. Single tick, they call it, based on the timing of the server for the, how the damage is distributed. But it was just enough to put him down in the end. You can see that. Valda, 16 frags to his name. Unbelievable work. AZ, great stuff there as well. Maybe overcommitted um, once the bomb was down, but still they win the round in a comfortable manner. That's two rounds in a row. It's breaking the finances down. Avangar pretty much full eco here. There's one deagle with armor, and that's about it. This is where Kadian can challenge right down towards OT steps, and you know there's no chance of having the AWP. You might as well. You're going to have the advantage uh, tenfold compared to a pistol at that position. So uh, there it is. Nice opening pick. Allows them to... Get some banana control as well. Very standard procedure to get that position when you're up against just pistols, no nades. And at this point... Oh, okay, no, nope, never mind. He was actually holding an angle. I thought just based <laughs> on his position, he might have had an issue. No, it's, uh, I guess at this point, when you're north, just hold up and make sure you don't give a single kill away. If you do, you'd actually be a little bit disappointed at this stage. Don't want to overcommit. Valda, another defensive line. Oh, lovely work with the grenade as well. They're doubling down. Gain's going to fight James as well. So just Buster remaining with a deagle. One versus five on a deagle. I don't think we're going to see another round go the way of Avangar based on that. But he's got some skill to show as he takes down the first kill on Nivalda. And work up toward the palm as well, which is just outside of the doorway, edge of the balcony. It's actually grabbable as he takes down Cade. If he found the headshot on Katie, and I would have opened up a window of opportunity for him. Still with 43 seconds, gets the bomb. He's trying to make it as interesting as he dare. There's nothing to lose for this. They're going to buy in the next round no matter what. He doesn't have armor, and it's just a pistol in his hands. Quite deadly pistol, but not an expensive one. So no loss in trying to take guns out of the CT's hands. Well, there we have it. North with another round on the board. A couple of dangerous moments there, but overall, they weathered the storm just fine, as we'll see the orb heading its way towards B potentially here. That's what you want to be doing with these... AWPs on the CT side. If you're not going for a double orb setup, you want to be moving it around almost every single round. We've seen Kadian peek towards T steps. Now with a good spawn, he'll challenge towards B. Guardian likes to go right up to the car. He's his tiny angle between the half wall. We'll see if uh, Kadian's that way inclined as well. Drops a smoke, which actually blocks his own vision, but a push past that. Brave to push it, to be honest, but this could be the boost now in towards Boiler. Not even the boost. This is actually a nice little setup, and it can have two players in this spot, but it could all fall apart very quickly. But do they suspect Valda there? I don't think they hit the shot fast enough on the player wrapping at top middle to make it 
impossible for him to see the second. So he had the information by the time he went down, then they just pushed stairs, they pushed the doorway again. There was really nothing that setup could do after that. Sure. So it was really only one for two. Bomb down top mid. Valda has control of it. He, in fact, puts down flames behind it because they are worried about a potential player having snuck out of the apartments, and rightfully so. That has indeed happened. But the bomb being on the ground is all that the CTs need to protect at this point in time. Fitch has to go hunting. He'll work back and try and connect with James so that they can clever off angles together and have trade potential. kirby has gone hunting as well. Undetected thus far, he'll hold Boiler Stairs. Decent position to be in because it means they can't really work back in that direction. They can slip down middle, however. As a result of that, a rotation already in effect from Volda back over toward the B site. That opens up access. And I think Kirby, ooh, timing everything. He does turn back. I thought he was going to get caught by James. Fitch has got the bomb. This isn't over just yet, but it's very close to being so. As soon as he goes for that plan, they're going to pincer him completely. He'll probably go for a fake plan here, I would say. There it is. Just to try and bait one of them out, but it's quite an obvious play. They know he's off here now at this point. He'll have to do the same again. Uh, very, very slim chance he does anything with this. Kiabi finishes the job off. Great positioning from him. Three kills in the round. Gets another AK. And now they've built up a decent streak of rounds. These rounds have been quite close. They won't be um, balling out of control with the money, but... Uh, They'll be in a very healthy situation. We'll see if Avangar wants to use another one of their tactical timeouts. Like I said, they've been using a lot of them so far. In this series, every map, I think they've used all four. As we enter the next round, it will be just Deagles. On the Avangar side of the Octagon, three sets of Kevlar, one smoke. Maybe to smoke off spawn. Go for that, see if he can get stuck in. But Valda, this is a bit of a calling card of his. Loves to peak that position when he knows Rico. Gets a first kill, falls back. Five on four, confirms it's an ego as well. Shame trying to work down with the Deagle. At least close the gap. Does exactly that as he sneaks in from Boiler. Able to jump up on the balcony from alt mid. Exactly this position. He finds one. Unable to grab the gun from that, however, because it would have been an overextension to do so. Now that they work as a team to clear top middle, that M4 certainly will be in the hands of one of the Avangar players. Looks like Kikert's going to be the one to pick that up. Can't really fault him for that. He's had exceptional aim so far. Great entry on B, as we saw early in this game with two kills on the AK. He's going this time, though. kirby has got the best of him. He's also got the bomb, and Jane found by Gate. It's now 10 to 3 north. Really extending the lead and extending this half to a quite convincing one. Yeah, double digits in an opening half is always quite a scary prospect, especially when there's a few to go still. Eskiabi, nothing really to write him about. They did lose the initial kill, so the fact he managed to hold them off, deny the plant, is still impressive. You can see that shaky aim coming in. One of the few pros that really consistently uh, has that sort of method, but it works very effectively for him as uh, we get into ooh, a bit of a... Replay situation, but we're back. Just scratch that, DJ. Yeah. And there's round 14, the Orbs out for Jamie, who has been a lot quieter on Inferno, I have to say. But obviously, it's a T side of Inferno. I'm sure you've heard us all bang on a floor, how it's difficult to warp at a top level on that side of the map. Monster takes down Kadian. One on four. Trying to open up on the B site. There's actually a rotation back, excuse me, just three players there. They pretty much left him to his own devices in that setup. He gets the best of it and actually gets away. So no redress, no aggression to counter that off and try and trade it back in the favor of the CTs. And now they'll put their pressure on to Gade, who's or was alone. Oh, what's going on toward Arch? Buster must have snuck through the smoke and got toward the cubby because Gabe went, or Volta, excuse me, went directly in front of him and completely missed the fact that he was up that close. So this looks like a decent chance for Avangar. That said, Baum still working up from quad side. Hasn't had access to the site. And Gade, he's locked out. He's pinched off. Kikert's going to take him down. That should lead to the plant at this point in time. But AZ's not far away. He'll be smoked off. Gap in it. He can use the odds to his advantage and find the kill. And Kikert, who peeks against it. Now he just has to go against the planter, who he knows is going to be in the site, but Krizen finds the angle instead. Great effort there from AZ. Spotted the gap in the smoke straight away. Realized there was an opportunity there. Hits the headshot initially, and we are starting to see some signs of life on this young man, showing he still has what it takes to be a top player. Great shots there. Couldn't quite convert the second, and nice work from Avangar to get another round on the board for them. Just a few, though. Final round of the first half, and looking for 10-5. We'll see if they can do it up against uh, pretty much fully equipped North. You can see Kadian taking a couple of compromises there with the utility to get himself the sniper. Fitch down to a Galil. We'll get into it now. 
Jame heading towards the apartments here. He will be challenged by the looks of things. That's double stacked towards border again. So we have seen players boost there before, but not in this sort of manner. Usually you have a player on top of the other's head, so you can see the top of the stairs and give less pixels away. But uh, they've allowed three players out of the apps here. This is a massive problem. Yeah, that's an overcommitment to the position. If they were going to peek it, they needed to do so early. Now they're trying to pincer behind, but they've already revealed the oh, fact the that they're inside of the boiler room position. Bomb denied, though. Kiari gets Kikert down. That makes problems for Avangar, because if they wanted to take advantage of the fact they were given position, they needed to get the bomb down early enough. Molotov takes down Krizen, despite that he got gay just before. It's from the grave. He'll get revenge. As Jame now has to plant. Can't even do that. Fakes it. He's uncomfortable. He's aware that they're all around him. And it's a one versus four for the last round. Traded immediately. That's all they had to do. Just sacrifice one. Take away the aggression. Get the kill. That seems so unlucky there. The fact that they get on the A site, and I didn't see it from Kiabi's POV, but it looked like he got a clean shot through the smoke to deny the plant. I'm not sure if he realizes how impactful that was, but uh, maybe we can have a look. But here's the highlights. Uh, this was James' amazing one versus three to kick off the game. And then, unfortunately, they didn't pick up many more after that. Gabe, decent game from him in the pip. Nice rounds and calculated play. You can see Valda posting big numbers as usual. Had a great game here once more. Always so ready for multiple players on his screen, it seems. And Kadian, uh, definitely been critical of his orping today, but this was actually a very good half from him. Managed to hit shots we know and love. And AZ, this was the double down towards the new boxes as uh, he continues to impress and look like it's a little bit more revitalized. Not quite there to his former sub just yet, but it's, it's getting there at this point. Valda, consistent as ever, though. Prison pushes down aggressively to start off the second half pistol, try and give Avangar a footing back into this game. They're going to think Banana's clear potentially because they've made contact with each other but not realize one is in toward the tree. That's AZ. He's popped out. He's figured out this play entirely. Kicker going down has now left Krizen entirely on his own behind enemy lines, and thankfully he's got one other player inside of the middle, but he's aware that he's also left the apartments open, has to run back. Krizen has no one to trade off of. So that one player at tree ultimately foils the aggressive plans from the CTs. They now have to go back to the site. Good hold from Gate. Bomb not quite planted as he covers off the corner, but it's just Fitch remaining. He'll get the bomb down with tons of time as he's well removed over toward the bottom side of middle. Not, can, not much can be done here, I'm afraid. Three kills to his name, 15 deaths there as well. And uh, left in the three versus one, and uh, bomb plant the other side of the map. Might as well save the armor. Is it 100? So you can get a helmet uh, for 350 next round, and they do force buy, and uh, a bit of utility as well. So it's actually worth saving the USP. It might seem like it's uh, a bit of a waste of time, but absolutely. If you've got 100 armor especially, might as well save that and allow them to win the round. Clean stuff from north. You can get away with the faster, more... Uh, Blase approaches towards the pistol rounds if you're able to have this sort of lead. 11 to 4 games in the second half is always going to swell with confidence as they make their way towards the A bomb site. So, Fitch, I assume they force by here. They pretty much need to. So, you'll see him probably get a helmet, maybe a scout to go with it. You can see the odds coming in from GG Bet. Avangar really up against it now. North look to be the clear favorites. Yeah, certainly. Looking that way as we get into map three, perhaps the depth starting to show. Avangar, no slouch, that's for sure. Another one of the teams in the CIS region that because there's so much going on there, sort of outside of the spotlight of, of you know, the European scene and the North American scene, we don't actually understand or come to appreciate how much talent there is and how much effort they put into their performances. We see it time and time again in the major cycle when they have multiple teams representing the region suddenly appearing in the top 12, top 16 in that event. This is looking like a guaranteed round. I hate to say it because James is the only player on this side of the map they have to save. Once the bomb's planted, you can't even go for it. Not the end of the world. Five players should survive here. But it's just another round where you have no say in it whatsoever. So there it is. Full save comes through. But like I said, they'll be able to get utility around what they have now. They'll be able to maybe upgrade one of these pistols, maybe an SMG. Um, that's about as exciting as it gets. Uh, they are going to get... $2,400 per player in the next round, at least. So that's actually enough for a FAMAS. If you're that way inclined, you want to upgrade that 5.7 to a FAMAS, could do that. Or opt for just all the utility and have some residual cash left over. Yeah, bizarre rounds when all 10 players stay alive. It seems rather unexciting to new viewers, but yeah. there's a great reason for it. It's the unicorn of CSGO. Very rare. Not that exciting. Some people say it never existed. <laughs> Well, there it is. All 10 players will survive. 
That is very, very rare indeed. You've witnessed a miracle here, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll get into the next round. Like I said, it's a bit of a gimme for North, but Avangard did make the correct decision there. You can upgrade now. You might as well go for it. There's not many chances left. I have to say, my heart bleeds a little bit for James, considering the numbers he was posting in these first few maps. Has dropped off an in Inferno, but 13-4 now. They'll buy everything they can. The FAMAS does indeed come out. Scouts there as well. Is there anything left here to be said for Avangar? Easy. He's extinguished himself at the tree, thankfully, and only one nade going that direction. He's down to 52, but the kill's going in favor of North. As they look to find round 14 to find a 10-round advantage with only two to go at that point in time. Jane waiting. No preemptive shots through the smoke. He may have been able to actually take down AZ had he elected to do so. He's gone to the scout, realizes they're in. Goes for the flick anyway. Not likely he's going to penetrate that wall with any gun, let alone a scout. Just wanted to keep that accuracy up. Well, at this point, that's all he's really got. Jane will have a chance at a kill here but it looks like the round is completely over we're gonna have Krizen with the mp9 there are kits available but uh, this looks like another one on the board for north they might even take some weapons away here jame trying to do what he can trying to take players down with the blast it seems and we have got at least Krizen. is he still there hiding in towards ruins he hasn't got the kit so he can't really do anything with this apart from take some players down with him problem is they're gonna get thirty five hundred dollars per player and uh it might not even matter at this point it's the CTs that desperately had to save anything they could. The terrorists, not really an issue. They've got a 14-4 scoreline. Plenty of money in the bank. And we'll head into the next round. Looks like North have done enough here. Pressure's off. Such a huge lead. It's quite rare to see even these ones slip away. But we'll see. The CT side of Inferno's, to me, just... It's not really worth speculating this is going to fall apart. It should be fine, but uh, we'll see how the next few gun rounds go. CTs, War of the Orb. The M4 there, UMP, and an M4 for Krizen. The flash, and that gives up the fact James towards middle, who can't seem to get going here. Kadian, ooh, risking a lot. Could have just fell back. Wanted to go through that, I think, but not going to happen. Good grenade in response. Yeah, he sat there and thought about throwing that smoke. It was a bit of a slow reaction, wasn't it? I think he was hoping maybe someone might consider flashing him in. Yes, indeed. I thought that was the play. He thought he could just run through, try and get a quick kill. Even if he goes down, a 4-4 four and four actually favors the T side. So if he gets a trade there, that's worth it. That's uh, not meant to be. Didn't take too much damage. It's not the end of the world. But they have a huge advantage here. AZ sticks in the FAMAS just to know. Saving that money. Really focusing on the bigger picture. Fitz just trying to peek off the front side of the bicycle. It's envisioned toward Quad James with the lack of information, the fact that no one was there and not willing to peek the top side of mid is already going to rotate back over, pre-boost in place. Trying to catch them out from CT. Catch flashed off. All time. In fact, pre smokes himself into position, hoping that if they Molotov, they oh, already no. have an extinguished wrong click. Not that. Why does Anything Fitch but that. do that? Tries Anything. to take the silencer off the M4A1S. That was a misclick on the mouse, and it took away his ability to fire the weapon, and therefore he went down defenselessly. Bit, you do hate Bit of a that. problem. Yeah, yeah that's, that's unfortunate, like especially he, when you're about to go into map point. I wanted to point out that setup because it was quite smart. They were ready for a full execution there. They had a player taking the attention away from that bike position you pointed out. He was just focused on the balcony drop downs. He was ready for it. If you right click, it takes the silencer off. It's a pretty redundant feature considering the weapon. I'm not sure why it even is a feature anymore, but it sounds um, cool. It sounds cooler when you take it off, yes. And uh, once you do that, that's two seconds. Your gun will not be functional whatsoever. It does nothing. So yeah, you have uh, to quick switch to cancel the animation as well. And yeah. that, even that takes seventh of a second. Yeah, so like once you do that, it's, it's a death sentence in that scenario. It couldn't have been a worse time for a misclick. Uh, panic can... Uh, Take over sometimes. As Valde gets 24 frags, it's a series point for North. We'll see what's available to Avangar here. Not much, I'm afraid. If they get 11 rounds in a row, that'd be pretty unbelievable. I don't think they're believing at this point. So at this point, that does mean that we have enough. Well, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but if the things can continue if as they concludes. are, um, we'll see 
North and Heroic in the upper bracket, and then the CIS battle, Avangar and Na'Vi in the lower bracket. That's Which is for elimination. Yes, that's actually quite nice in terms of all the storylines we have here. Some rivalries going on tomorrow, that'll be fun. Yeah, you consider that Heroic has uh, so much Danish influence and presence on that team yeah. now. That's when we'll and see the... Mertz goes against That's when we'll team. see the banter in the Octagon. That's the game. That wow. is the one. That would be certainly a tantalizing prospect, considering who's among them. But Kiarbi found by Krizen. He'll go down one for one, but that just opens up the opportunity for Bolt to walk in. Good flash. If that flash wasn't there, AK wins that battle all day long against Krizen. He's got one of his own... Er, Quicker, excuse me. He's got one of his own, but he's not able to find the angle in time. Thankfully, with detriment to vision, he is. Still, though, it's all on Acadian. And you're trying to stay alive for one further round at the very least. And don't rule them out. We know CT side comebacks are certainly possible on this map. It's just that I'm not that encouraged by what we've seen so far to start raising that prospect. Oh, good shot. His 14th. He has done so much heavy lifting in this series so far. I think it was enough, but unfortunately, now just playing for overtime in the third and final map. We'll see what's available to him. As now, we get into, is this a tactical pause? They love him, we talked about that. But it looks like we are underway. AK is available to them. And North trying to close this out as quickly as possible. We saw all the maps today. Surprising considering some of the matchups on paper. Didn't look like there'd be that sort of day, but uh, we've gone the full distance in both series here, another two games we play tomorrow. As Grizzin is actually pushed down, looking towards second middle at this point. Got to make some plays, Matt. Got to make something happen. And he's certainly delivering the goods. Absolutely is. Good reactions as well to fire back down from bench. They're starting to look a little more in form. Convincing. Just one to find in Katie, and he's tagged through the smoke. In fact, they'll not relent the fire and eventually find him to make it now. Another round, getting up towards six on the T side for Avangar. CT side, excuse me, I should say. You can say whatever you like. Really. Well, I could, but not all of it would be accurate, so no. I'd like to stay yeah. that way. <laughs> well, AWPs are out. May I have your attention? Yes, you may. <laughs> tell me. say the same thing. Tell me what you want to say. All right, pack it up, boys. Let's wrap this one up. We're not visitors, Henry. We live here. Well, that's, the, that's the, the surprise I didn't tell you. We get to stay the night on the booth and sleep in the octagon. So, uh, I'm so down. It's, yeah, I bet you are. It's going to be a lot of fun. We can play Counter-Strike if you want, or just wrestle. <laughs> Both acceptable things to do inside of an octagon, it seems. Long out for Krizen, AWP for Jame. Pistols only for North, so this is starting to look like it will go a little bit further yet still. As North have to concede this round, still a comfortable cushion to rest that on. No threats or pressure applied just yet. But this is where economic battles become to be, or come to be a problem. You basically lose one, you lose two, because you have to concede every second round until you build back up your economy. In Ooh. theory. We'll see what they can do. These rounds always seem to be very tricky to hold off, especially when North are so confident at this point. They, they know it's pretty much an unlosable game and they somehow will find one digs, capitalize upon overextensions from the CTs. We will see as uh, round 22 comes to his logical conclusion now. A little bit of an A fake here. You can see Vald has made it into the pit, but his teammates running all the way back. Bust a good position. He needed intel there, and he's getting more than that. Gets the first kill, holds him off with the flashbang. Nice idea from North. And they actually are coming back away now. It's just complete pandemonium at this point. CT trying to gather as to what's going on. It's going to be 20 seconds remaining. This still has to land for Krizen. He gets it, but surely traded out. Great aim. That should secure things, but Buster is a long way away from the situation. Aim on the AWP, trying to swing back around. Bomb at least planted. Certainly possible that North can pull this off. Both rotating, the other two, I should say. Both of James' teammates rotating back through the arch. Great shot through the wall at Graveyard to anticipate where Evolve is playing. Baits out the shots on the AUG as well. He's already switched over to the Deagle because he doesn't have the ammunition. And with three players from the same angle, eventually one of them should surely take him down, and they do. There was a world there where three 1Ds came in. I could feel it. I was ready. I was going to give it everything I had, but uh, didn't quite land. And it will be Avangar managing to save themselves for yet another round. Remember, that's up against the Eco, though. The bomb got planted, so should be a nice healthy buy here. Available for North. Three rounds against them. Looking to close them out. One more will do it. As we'll have a look at the frag chat. See Vard at the top there at 26. 
Hovering around 15 is the top of Avangar. GM works back out toward mid immediately with the AWP. Had a decent spawn. In fact, they're going to go 4 1. Very, very aggressive toward Banana. Oh, headbutting the nade was easy. I think Ow. their nades actually may have crossed each other. I don't Look know at what the happened. damage done. I thought they might have made contact with each other. <laughs> Three and four, respectively, and they're gone. Another nade. That's it. Busters burn them both alive. Four man stack toward Banana early on. The utility is going to win the battle for them. Avangar starting to show some form. And again, this is where we get into it. Every second round is effectively a save for North until that max loss bonus builds up, or they can get some bomb plants to inject the extra $800 into the economy. So we get closer to double digits with each and every round. We absolutely do, and that's the danger point. If it gets double digits, that's when I always say, like, well, at this point, you're starting to worry, and that's when every round becomes a little bit troublesome and worrying for you, as now. We'll have to look at the replay there. It looked like it was, there was lots going on with those grenades. I'm not sure they bounced with each other or it collided with other obstacles in the way. It was all very confusing, but a lot of damage inflicted. That's all we know towards North and Kiabi and Kadian both being burnt to a crisp by Buster from a single incendiary. So that's not bad as they, they can still win this round. You can see if they went sent three players in towards B now, objectively they can still get three kills and survive and be left with an advantageous position, but it will take an absolute nightmare of a setup for Avangar for that to transpire. 30 seconds remain. Money not looking too great. Here's the execution. They'll give it everything they've got. Molotov towards the Emo position. As Buster will fire off and give away his position towards Coffin. This is actually looking relatively promising. Gate will get the opening kill. They haven't effectively Molotov towards new boxes, so Fitch can stay in position. And you can see him checking to see if that spread was going to extend under his angle or if the flames would reach his feet. They didn't, and you're right. They anticipated that was completely clean. It was a misthrown. Molotov, and it allows for two kills. And it's the final. It's now the eighth round for Avangar. The sound cue chimes yet again for the fact that it is map and series point, but North really not in a position to take it this time around. As money not on their side. Momentum not either, and I think we've got a timeout. We're still in the same graphic screen that you are. Maybe not. It doesn't look that way. Well, let's find out. It looks like an eco to me. Yes, indeed. CZs, Desert Eagles, and uh, a little bit of armor here as well. North starting to sweat somewhat. This is actually getting into the realms of possible for Avangar. We'll see. This is straight up Apps Rush, looks to be the case. But Chrism with that smoke, if they do just rush it, he'll shut them down completely. There's the smoke. They run through, and oh my oh, goodness, dear. it's awkward as hell. But the frags come in. It doesn't matter how pretty they are, Matt. They all count. Bombs down. He's done the job. Tried to trace every player that ran yeah. out, couldn't find the headshots ahead of time. That could have been very awkward, but they were already committed to jumping down. So he gets away with two. Gade pulls one back. Chrism finally falls. Buster on top of the site, though, sits in the hot seat because he can watch over toward the pit. Bomb still down just in front. In fact, did it stay above? I think it did stay up top, which means they've got to go back for that awkward in itself. And with just Katie and Gade, although picking up an AK, it's unlikely they'll be able to pull this round back. So 15-9, and that's not surprising considering that they did stick with just the pistols. Kate didn't even try to sneak in at this point. He's found by Geekert. It's Gate that's gone undetected. I think they may yeah, have the information that he's in toward the pit. They certainly do now as they lose Fitch for trying to find out. One round away from that exact point we talk about for comebacks. The double digits when it becomes a big problem that you have to save every second round. You really are correct in saying that, but another gun round presumably on the cards. You can see they're looking a little bit more relaxed now on that side. One round will do it, but you can see North starting to look a little flustered now, trying to work out how they break down this final round and put themselves in the upper bracket final. That would be against Heroic, their Danish counterparts. That will be one hell of a game. I really hope that is the one we see because that's when you'll hear them going at it. Lots of storylines there, lots of previous teammates and points to prove, especially for the likes of Mertz, who was uh, a former North player, of course. Yeah, he certainly had some time in that team through the whole organization, not so much on that particular team and roster, the, sure. the A team, if you will, but in the system, in the organization, James is going to get aggressive again with the AWP, but this time it's not toward top middle. He'll take stance toward Banana instead. Molotov's already down, but they don't spew beyond the barrels, and therefore he's got some footing to work with. No one getting aggressive. It's a misjump from Gade. 
it actually is a little bit trickier than it seems. Like, you see a lot of pros, like, every now and then miss that one. Can be a bit awkward when you really have to make the bomb get up there quickly, but there we go. It is going to be B control fully in the hands of Avangar here, but they've got three players on this side of the map. What is the play? Buster just fully trying to bait in his teammate here. It's quite the commitment, but it means you don't really need much utility to hold off B now, but they only have two players towards A. Now, this could be the downfall. Do they push now towards the bottom of middle and try and make the most of this? Because they really are lacking intel towards middle. Very defensive position. You see Fitz is trying to change his vision between the quad, apartments, and indeed the arch, as his teammate just watches for the drops. And there's the push towards the bottom of Banana. AZ is ready for it, takes him down. Is this the round where they close things out? gets all the way back. They need to re-clear Banana at this point. They gave so much to the CTs, and even though they flash off, Jamie already had the angle set, so timing was everything. He just fires into it, catches out Kierby, and Buster, he's still down in the corner. They know that he's there, he's made some noise, he's fired a few shots, expecting them to continue the push, but they've subsided and gone back over toward A-Smoke down. They've wrapped on top of Library, it's all under Krizen. He's got to hold this together for Avangar. He's dinked already, but it's through the wall, so he stays with 65 HP. That's ample opportunity to fight. Enough to give a challenge, but not when Gabe gets above, and it's just Buster and Jame remaining. Kadian might even sneak out perfectly timed behind them. I say that. He's a little bit late. They've snuck through over toward the alt mid. Buster will lead the way from quad. His teammate, James, taking his time to get position high and above with the AWP will work out through apartments, but time's not really something they have a lot of because even with the kits, it's been ticking for a while. The bomb, Gade's got Buster. This should be it. This should be North wrapping up the series. And with that, Good shot. great shot from James. But with winning that and the trade out from AZ, they will play off against Heroic tomorrow in the upper bracket. That's going to be a great game. I love the storylines here.